Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hello, everybody. I have the great pleasure of interviewing a close friend and colleague of mine. Her name is Lynn Maureen Hurdle. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit about her personally, and then I will give you her professional bio. And then I'm going to let her start talking, and who knows where this will go, because she's already offered to bring out the tequila. <laughs> yes, we are tequila buddies. Lynn and I met several years ago in a high-end mastermind group, and I will tell you that immediately I knew that she was a brilliant woman who I had to get to know more, and I found out that she was a con conflict resolution strategist, and oh my goodness, I was so scared of conflict. I avoided it on every turn. I did not want to deal with conflict. I, I thought it was a negative thing. And then I started working with Lynn and I worked privately with Lynn to learn more about how to resolve conflict, that conflict can actually be a positive thing. And then I began to work with Lynn on how to be a stronger leader. And Lynn took me by the hand and taught me very kindly, but with all the strength that she has, which you'll hear in just a minute, how to be a good leader, how to step up as a leader. And most recently, over the last two years, I've been working with Lynn about racism. Yes, I am a white woman who did not know I had white privilege. And I'm still trying to figure out why I didn't know this, why I didn't see this. And I just started Lynn's third level of that program last night. And I will tell you that this whole experience with Lynn has changed my entire life for the better. I've stepped more into who I've always wanted to be, but didn't know how to be with Lynn's help. So I hope that makes you go, oh my gosh, I have got to get to know who this woman is. But let me tell you a little bit about her professionally. She's a communications expert. And as I mentioned, a conflict resolution strategist. She's a facilitator a speaker and a leadership coach with over, over 35 years. But she ain't an old lady, let me tell you, if you aren't watching us on YouTube, get on there now and check her out. <laughs> with over 35 years of experience in blending the connection between communication, conflict, and culture into her own unique style of engagement for leaders. She's also a TEDx speaker and the author, author of the bestseller, Closing Conflict for Leaders how to be a bold leader and develop a kick-ass, high-functioning, happy AF team. <laughs> and her expertise is in engaging my clients, her clients with creative process designed to create dialogue and teach skills that can be used in the most difficult leadership situations. And I don't know that I've had the most difficult. I've had challenging ones, but guess what? By working with Lynn, I've learned how to handle those and not only just handle them, but really feel like a success. So Lynn, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you, Kathy, for having me. Wow, I love the intro. Thank you so much. It is my honor and pleasure to be here today. Yes, and hello to everyone who's watching and listening. Thanks for tuning in. It is uh, quite a ride. I was saying to Kathy before we turn on the cameras and the recording, that I love the dare to leap, that uh, I just love that title because uh, first of all, to dare is, is, requires such bravery, right? And then to leap, like you might dare to maybe take a little step, but to leap, <laughs> <laughs> that's got me written all over it, I have to say. <laughs> Whether I intended to leap or I just kind of sprung out there, but that's really me, and uh, and so I I'm really excited to be having a conversation with you today. So Thank you, you want me to, and, and yeah, yeah, jump on in, tell right, them your I'm journey a, of where you've it's, leaped and where you dared to just give me the mic. <laughs> 
but okay, here we go. Yeah. So, so you know, I, I was thinking about that deer to leap, and it, and for me, it starts very, very early in my career because I actually had no idea that this was what I was going to do because I grew up in the arts. I knew that I was going to be a performer and I knew that I was going to go to college and that I was going to study theater most likely because I loved acting, but I also sang. I also danced. I wrote. I, I, I still do all these things. I write uh, all kinds of things from poetry to plays to uh, television shows, movies like that. So I knew like I'm going to do the whole performance thing and be a star. And uh, at 17 years old, everything changed for me. And I didn't know that it was going to because I experienced uh, a racial incident that really changed my life uh, on a bus. And the bus stopped a mile from my home. And suddenly we're surrounded by 50 young white men, uh, red bandanas and baseball bats who are screaming for the N, the N word to come out. And I look around, it's just me and two other black people and the bus is crowded. And so I knew that I was in trouble and they tried to tip over the bus. And the only thing that stopped them is across the street came a bus filled with uh, black high school kids. And so I was able to get off the bus with another young man who was my age, who was lost because it was his first week in the neighborhood. And I took him home and on my way home from his house, I hear this voice that's saying, uh, I don't know how, but somehow I think my purpose is to bring people together around this issue. And I remember that so clearly because I'd never, ever, ever thought that in my life. I, I certainly never thought I'd be doing something to help people do anything but to smile and cheer me on, you know? <laughs> But you're talking help people have these conversations and so how did it how it happened i already knew i was going to syracuse university in new york and they had a very prestigious theater program and uh my sophomore year i transferred into their brand new program on nonviolent conflict and change and without a hesitation you know it was just like i i took the dare to leap to my calling and I've been in the field of conflict resolution really ever since then. And it has been an incredible ride because I started out, you know, consultant. Well, I actually got a job in the field and was doing consulting part time, you know, like um, vacation days and if anybody did weekend kind of things. And it, I just got so popular, I built up such a clientele that everybody's like, okay, but we can never use you during the week. You know, when are you going to leave your job? I'm like, wow, like leave my job? Okay, because <laughs> no one had ever, did, you know, if I grew up with parents that are like, you know, you work the same job your whole life. <laughs> and I'm just like, wow, okay, leave my job. So once again, uh, basically what I did was uh, when my first son came along and he is 25 now, so I just dared to leap to say, okay. I don't want to work for anybody while I'm a mother anyway. So I'm going to see how I can do as a consultant, a contractor. And I, I'm, I have to be honest, thank God I had a husband with health insurance because <laughs> I was working the consultant field of, oh, nonprofits don't pay you well. Oh, we don't pay consultants well and definitely don't pay them regularly. I mean, to have the, the kinds of conversations I had to get paid to just get my check. <laughs> Talk mm -hmm. about daring to leap. I was ready to leap <laughs> on some people. <laughs> right? My dog on check. My rent needs to get paid. So, so I, I did that for so many years, like 30 years. And I just said, wow something's wrong. Something's really wrong. And I need to see what it is. And so I decided to hire a coach and uh, the same coach you and I, Jennifer Cam, you know, that's, uh, we met, you came on a couple of years after me, but that's what I decided. I said, I'm taking this leap and invest in my business so that I can get paid what I know 
I'm worth getting paid because I just never believe, I did believe, I did believe for a long time that, okay, this, I'm not worth a lot of money, you know, no, they're not going to pay me well. And so this is my lot in life, right? This is, <laughs> and then I just said, no, hmm, that's not sitting well with me. And so to actually invest in a coach and actually learn how to put myself out there. You know, um, I, had, I was approached by, because of work that I did, a workshop that I did, I was approached by someone three years later and she said, I am uh, booking people for TED Talks and I remembered you. That's <laughs> like three wow. years. I only saw this woman for one weekend for a workshop <laughs> on conflict resolution and she remembered yeah. me. And that's how I got my TED Talk. And I just found that things just started really rolling once I took the leap to say, uh, I'm, I'm going to invest in making sure that I get what I'm worth. And because I work, the way I work now is the way I was working for, honestly, 10 times less. So it's not like they were getting anything less. I was just the only one getting less. So, yeah. Um, so I As think Jen really has taught us, I can hear Jen saying to you now, Girl, go get your money. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you went and got your money. I went and got my money. I'm still going and get my money. And I'm still, you know, working on, on that end of things, of really making sure that I am, uh, I'm getting what I'm worth. And, and everybody that hires me is getting what they, you know, what they want right? Because I'm, I'm going to deliver. That's the piece. I never had you that. You deliver. I you never deliver. had that, you over that confidence piece. Yes, that's right. I over deliver and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that because I will definitely uh, catch up on the money end of things. But I know that the confidence piece was never my issue. Once I started, high, you know, once I hired Jen Kim, I, I knew, I knew, I knew I knew what I was doing. So that piece, because I know sometimes that's an issue for folks, like, am I really good enough? Or what, will people really pay me this? I'm not really sure because I'm not sure how good I am. That was never my issue. My issue was I had believed that I wasn't worth the money. You know, nobody was really going to pay me the money. That there weren't people out there who could that, value you the way you knew, yes, you, yes. knew you should be valued. That's right. Or and that um, if you're working with nonprofits, they can often convince you that they don't have money. Now, That's some right. of them don't, but some of them have a lot of money. That's right. That's right. But yes. Too late. I discovered that. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as they know you'll buy the party line, you know, for folks out there, as long as they know that you will buy the party line, then absolutely the they're not going to offer you more, right? Because they're like, okay, good. That's right. They're not going to question. They're not going to push back. And I never did. The only thing I pushed on was getting my check. And, you know, I had, I had quite a reputation. <laughs> you know, the, the <laughs> reputation was you better pay, Lynn. <laughs> and that's a good reputation to have. And that's a great reputation to have, especially when you're being underpaid because it's bad enough you're being underpaid. But then to have to never, like you never get your check, no, at least one That's or the other ridiculous. was ridiculous. And it was ridiculous. Yeah. And so, uh, and now, you know, having that coach, I know how to really get, I mean, Jen was the one that said, get, girl, let, get some money up front. Get, what do you know? Why are you waiting on for it all till the end? Get your money up front. And I said, really? I don't think they'll do that. She's like, go ask him. <laughs> 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 and I did and they did. That's what I'm saying, That's right. right? That whole dare to yep. leap piece is like, yes, I asked and they did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's good up. for you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And talk a little bit about what you're up to these days. Cause <laughs> I know you've dared to leap in a couple of different things. Oh yeah. A couple of different things. So, you know, you get, 
the you get the kind of hot off the press thing around this piece, which is I, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so I know you know that I'm writing a television pilot, but what uh what I haven't shared is that I'm actually not planning to leave the business. I'm planning to grow an additional side of the business. So I'm planning to add a production company to the conflict resolution business that I already have. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah, so that's, that's the piece is that I'm really- You and Tyler Perry. Yes, I'm, I'm <laughs> hey, what a great model to follow, man. No I'm joke. A great model to follow. And so, yeah, I'm really, that's my intention is to really have this as a piece because my, my writing, the stories that I intend to tell, you know, everybody has to have conflict in their stories. But to me, there's a, there's a, there are stories missing about the various ways that people engage in and resolve conflict. It seems to me like we have this one model where everybody like kind of, yells at each other and curses each other out and name calls or fights with each other i mean that's a model that's real okay but if that's, that's what's that's happening now a lot of times yes yeah that's all we're seeing and i want i want the stories out there of people who are much more complex than that and who really struggle around conflict but but engage in it right and and do it in very different ways. And so uh, that's my piece. I really am moving to, uh, to open my production company as a part of my business. Hercom Solutions is the name of my business. Um, H-U-R-R-Com, is that right? H-U-R, H-U-R, one R like the okay. hurdle in my name. Yep. And, oh yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm actually looking, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to change it to her, her communication solutions. Cool. Uh, yeah. I love it. And, HCS. and then my, yep. HCS. <laughs> yep. I like that. <laughs> and my production <laughs> company is actually, I already named it. It's, uh, it's called no matter what productions. Oh, I and, like it. Yeah. And then no matter is spelled N O M like Mary A D like David A. Uh, and so oh, no, uh, matter. no matter no what? matter what. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love, I love it. it. So that's one now, thing is your goal to pro is your goal to produce your own um show? This first one even? Are you uh the first one probably not. The first one is okay. my, my goal with the first one is like to learn, learn, learn. Learn the business. Yeah. I want I want that show picked up by uh, people who can help me learn because I actually want to be hired as a writer on that show as well. You know, uh, so I want to learn the business, and then yes, I really do want to put uh, put my other things under my production company. So that's one thing, and then the other thing is a venture that you and I, you know, you brought me into. <laughs> I, I'm not that, a, that she I'm not saw <laughs> she saw a big problem you know how they always say <laughs> if you identify a problem and you can solve it you can really create something great well lynn yeah. saw a real problem <laughs> when she experienced me yeah yeah but kathy was you know kathy you've always been the kind of person like you know tell me tell me <laughs> and, right i want to learn i, I am it. curious I learn right and so we had this conversation, we're on this mastermind high, high, high level retreat and we have this conversation. Uh, and, you know, Kathy says, I really love to work with you again, um, but I'm just wondering if you would give any thought to doing a group for white people like me who really don't know about racism, but want to learn and do something about it. And Kathy, you can tell them my response. No, <laughs> it was more of a hell no. Yes, it was. <laughs> it is not my job to teach white people. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. But again, again, right? I mean, we were together, what, three days at the most? And, uh, mm -hmm. and by yeah. the end of that time, before we left, I was already working on the landing page for the 
program, right? <laughs> that, that I already was. And because I, I knew, I knew once again, that voice that said, no, you are supposed to do this. And so Dare to Leap, right? We have the first one. There's eight people. I'm good. Look, all right, I did it. I'm done. And then... <laughs> and she kept saying throughout <laughs> this whole process, <laughs> us, and it was, was it, it was one white guy in yep. like how many white seven, women, seven, um, women. seven white women and one white guy. And oh my gosh, we learned so much. Oh, uh, it was amazing how much we learned. But the whole time Lynn kept saying, this is it. Don't be asking for any more. I'm not doing any more. I mean, almost every time this is painful. So this is hurting me. I don't want to do this anymore. This is the last one. I hope you all are getting this. I'm not, right. don't be asking. Anymore, and then right? what happened, Lynn? And then, and then what happened was, I, I honestly can't remember the whole details, but all I know is we went into, okay, fine. I'm doing one more and that's it. Right? <laughs> that I remember. This is it. You better get in. You better stay in because this is it. I don't feel anything else, right? <laughs> I don't feel yeah. the And Lynn, um, I, I'm not sure if this is what happened, but I'm kind of guessing that you kept looking at me and going, oh, dear God, <laughs> right? she needs to know so much more. <laughs> well, I She's did barely... feel like everybody needed more, but I already knew <laughs> that. I know that coming in. That's a long, this is a long <laughs> track. If you want to learn, if you're a white person who really wants to learn about racism, it's a long track, right? So I knew that. I just didn't think I was the one that you need to be trekking on with. <laughs> and, and, and then I tried to get out of it again because we actually only had three people, right? And I said, listen, it's small, so it's okay if you don't want to do it. <laughs> and everybody was like, but we do. <laughs> mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was fabulous. I have to say, it was, it was really fabulous. Uh, with three people, it really was. It was fabulous. It was. It absolutely was. And so, and three so white women. once again, <laughs> okay, this is it. Not going to do another one. And then uh, two things happened actually. Uh, again, because Kathy was one of two white women who asked me at the same time to mm -hmm. what I do this. She was also at the uh, high-end mastermind retreat with us. Yes, that's right. And then mm -hmm. what happened this time is uh, two women who were referred by uh, one of the white women who was in the first round, they just emailed me and said, any chance you're going to do another group? And I said, oh, I don't think so. But you know what? <laughs> but you know what? Stay in touch. You snorted. You right. made me laugh so hard. I snorted. I, know. I, <laughs> I said, stay in touch. You know, I'll email you. I'll let you know. And I, I, I believe it was a week later, George Floyd was killed. And the world just, you know, flipped, right? Upside down. And so many white people were looking for something. And so I contacted them immediately and said, look, I'm going to do a group. I'm going to start that in September. And um, so if you want in, you know, I interview everybody because you have to really be the right person in terms of ready for the journey, right? Because it's a six month journey and it is work. And then I opened it up and I didn't even do ads. I did no ads. I just you did no up. marketing. I did not. You really didn't do I any marketing. It, I just put a post on Facebook. This is what I'm doing in uh, 48 hours. Uh, that filled with the 12 people who were ready to be interviewed. I said, oh my goodness, other people want it. So I opened up a second group. 24 hours later, that was full. And then you had me do a workshop for your VE community. And I mm -hmm. knew that there was not enough room for all of the tickets. I mean, remember people were signing up for interviews while I was still doing the workshop. Yes. <laughs> Once yes. that link hit, That's they how... just, they <laughs> left them, went on the link to sign up to do interviews. So, yeah. so I said, Kathy, look, I don't want to turn them down. And there's enough of them for their own group. 
And so there was a third group. And then all, <laughs> and then you all wanted to continue. And then the people who had left from the first group all wanted to come back. So there was a fourth group. And then I interviewed this amazing man and we get to the end of the interview. He's like, I'm all in. And I tell him the date and time. And he's like, I'm in the UK. That's 1.30 in the morning. He said, any chance if I get people here in the UK, I do all the work and I get people who want to do the work. Is there any chance you would do another group during our, in our time zone? And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, sure. Because I'm like, he's not going to get <laughs> I got a fifth group, a UK group. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> From zero, I'm not ever doing this again, to five, five. groups with one in Europe. That's wow, right. Lynn. That's right. And that's what happens when you dare to leap. And when right. you believe in yourself. And when you listen to that voice, your higher power, whatever you call that. Mm-hmm that is telling you what you're here on earth to do. That's right. And, and, and I'm certainly living proof of it. And I, and I honestly have to say, while my first reaction might be no, I always tune in. And when I tune in and I get the yes, I leap on that yes. And I think too many people hesitate or they want another opinion. Or is that really the voice? Or is that for me? Oh, maybe it's for Kathy back there. No. <laughs> <laughs> hoping it's for somebody else. Right. You yeah, were, you were I hoping never, it was for somebody else. <laughs> I never do that. I always know, okay, then that's what I have to do. Whether I understand it, whether it's what I planned on doing or not. It's, I'm always obedient to that. And that's the other piece I think about leaping is that don't, don't keep waiting for it to come back around and hit you over the head with it. Yes, I was talking to you. No, you know the first time that voice is for you. So go ahead, take the leap. And I will honestly say it is some of the most meaningful work that I have ever done. And I've done tons of meaningful work. I just have. But this is, without a doubt, some of the most meaningful work that I've ever done. So I'm happy, very happy to have taken that leap. Well, Lynn, uh, from somebody who's been, who is now in the third version of that, and, you know, as I mentioned, I worked with you for years before that also, I can tell you that you've changed my life. I mean, in just amazing, wonderful, powerful ways. I'm happier. I feel more empowered. Mm -hmm. Uh, When George Floyd um died and black lives matter happened i wasn't thankfully because of lynn i was not one of those people that was scrambling and going what do i do do i just keep quiet Mm -hmm. i knew what to do i contacted lynn immediately and said lynn will you do a workshop for me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) yes yeah yeah that's right because i'm not an authority on this and Mm -hmm. i needed an authority Mm -hmm. and you are that authority lynn yeah. And I appreciate you for that. I appreciate you too, because, you know, you had 60 people who show <laughs> up and, and we did it like in a week and a half time. Like you put out the word mm-hmm. and you had 60 people show up and, um, mm-hmm. and 12 who signed up to interview. So, I mean, come on, you know, mm-hmm. it, the work and, and that's to me also the partnerships that that's what happens when you leap to people mm-hmm. actually want to help you to achieve what it is that you're trying to achieve. I've never had to go alone at this. It may feel lonely at times, but I've always had someone brought into my life that wanted to help and inevitably did help. And so I think that people have to trust that too, that when you do that, when you take that leap, that the help that you need will come to meet you. Lynn, I know how strong you are. You're probably the strongest woman I've ever known. Uh, because you, you know, you're a black woman who lives racism every day and who has to confront that every day. And I so admire you for all of those things. And I think that's part of probably what makes you so strong and able to listen to that voice and have that courage to leap. But there are many others out there who don't have that level of courage yet. Mm-hmm. 
what advice do you have for them? Yeah. When they are called to dare to leap, when they have even that little tiny, mm -hmm. Ooh, I think I might want to do that, mm -hmm. but they can't mm -hmm. do it. What advice do you have? Well, first of all, you know, I'm big on breath. So I, I advise you to take time to do some real breathing, just to really breathe and to be able to put yourself in a place of being settled enough to listen. Okay. And so now you've got that voice and you know, it's the voice and you know that you, it's telling you to leap and you're afraid to leap. And I want you to just vision what, what will happen to you if you don't. Because that was the piece for me. Mm -hmm. I can't live with knowing that uh, there might have been another picture, or there might have been another life, there might have been uh, something else that I actually could be good at and enjoy, but instead I chose not to leap. I want people, to, I want you to really picture that because that's exactly what you're going to get if you don't take that leap. So take that first step. Uh, and honestly, if you can't leap, then take the step and fall. You know what I'm saying? Just take the yeah. free fall. <laughs> because sometimes it's just, okay, I could, I could just get one foot off the ledge, okay? And then let go because then you're there, right? You've essentially taken the leap and you just, just keep going once you have, because it, it was never a smooth ride, right? In those beginning years after uh, even, you know, hiring Jen Kem as my coach, I, it was never a smooth ride. There was lots of times when I questioned, is this ever really going to be what I wanted it to be and have envisioned it to be, but I knew that if I didn't keep going, it certainly never would. <laughs> like there was just not a chance that it was ever going to happen if I stopped. And that's the thing that I think that you have to really consider and think about and, and then just go. And then reach out to someone you know who will encourage you because that's the other piece. I think we reach out to the wrong people. We reach out to the people who are too afraid to even listen to this podcast, much less take a leap, <laughs> right? And you're calling them. Boy, that's <laughs> really, that is really lack of courage, not even to listen to this podcast. <laughs> they, they, listen. they won't even listen. So, and you're calling them for advice or courage, right? No. Find out who, you know, you know who has that kind of courage and call them, reach out to them and, and just say, help me hold on. And, and do what's next, right? I also do believe very much that you have to invest in your business and yourself. You just do. You have to get people who know more than you do, or smarter than you do. You know that. You've just said that, right? Uh, you got to do that because you really need help to do this. And nobody knows everything. So get the help, hire the person. You know, maybe you don't have the funds for the big bucks coach yet, but you probably have the funds for someone who can help, right? Uh, that's, I really think that you've got to do that. It's got to be something different than what you've already been doing in order for you to get different results. Yeah. And Lindy, like I have a rule of thumb now that I've gone through this and I've, I've had lots of different coaches. I've paid lots mm -hmm. of different prices. I kind of have a rule of thumb on how I decide how much to pay um, or what next level to go to. Do you? I'm happy to share mine if you want me to, but I uh, want to see if you yours, have something. I don't, I don't really have a rule of You've probably thumb. always chosen good ones. <laughs> I have not always chosen good ones. I, I, oh, and the I, reason I, let, me, let me tell you, let me back up and tell y'all the very okay. first person before Jane Camp. I keep, I keep reminding myself of all the good that she did because I'm going to tell you, I paid way too much for her. I'm going to tell you, I paid way too much for her. Yeah. Um, and that's a mistake that happens, but you know, I grew from that. Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. But I will say the oh, one yeah. thing that I have is 
I will look to work with people that I know are good and I will keep looking if their price is, is to me like, wow, this is high, but I know they're worth it, you know, but it's high. Mm -hmm. I will keep looking for opportunities to work with. And that happened with me with another coach is that, I mean, she is well worth and really charges up there. And she just happened to be uh, wanting to test out a new program. And it was like so much less than her other ones. And even that was a stretch for me, right? But mm -hmm. I knew it was a stretch mm -hmm. I could meet, right? right? But it was like, oh my gosh, this is my opportunity to work with her. And it's actually something that's within my reach. I'm going to right. do it. And I think that's what you have to do too, is just, uh, you could maybe have a, a list, right? This would be first, I could afford second, and this would be my dream, right? And keep following yeah. them to see mm -hmm. if you can get a chance with them. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you on that. Um, could you talk a little bit about, I love that word stretch that you use. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's like, well, here's what I can afford. Right. And then you go, no, 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 that's not where, that's not where you want to go. What you can't mm -hmm. afford, that's pretty much what you've been getting, right? Right. That's right. That's so right. talk about the stretch when you said, I could do it, but it was a stretch. Yeah. What does that feel like? What is that? Oh, mean? that was And why is that incredible. a good thing? That was quite incredible <laughs> for me. And it's, it is a good thing because I'll tell you what happened is that I did the interview with the coach that who I really, really, really wanted to work with. And I was very nervous to do it because I knew that I was going to say, I really can't afford it. Because I'm going to tell you, I had zero dollars in the bank at the time. I honestly had zero in the bank. And, uh, but I just really, I, I just wanted to see what this was about and what the price was going to be. And then told me the price and I said, I got zero dollars. So uh, that's not going to happen. And she gave me something to stretch. She said, okay. Um, I can't believe that that's not going to happen. So I'm going to give you 48 hours and then let me know. And when I got off that call, I said, are you really stoppable for that amount? And I said, oh, hell no, I'm not stoppable for that amount. And I just sat down. Honestly, what I did was I wrote to five different people and asked if they would invest in my business for a certain amount. And I would get, I would pay interest on it. And this is when I you know, knew I could pay it back. And, uh, and one person gave me the whole daggone thing within oh, 24 that hours. That is so amazing. <laughs> I love that. And, you know, so many people are afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost you anything to ask. Mm -hmm. The answer is already no, if you don't ask. That's and right. And if you ask, the answer might be yes. That's right. That is right. It is. It's absolutely true. And I think that you have to stretch yourself in that way because you're trying to get to another level. You're trying to get new results. And as you said, if you're saying, I can't afford it, then you're going to get the same results because that's all you have been saying. I told you, I went onto that call with $0 saying, I'm just going to tell her I can't afford it. Like I said mm -hmm. that. And she mm -hmm the question or the challenge to stretch me and I decided I was going to stretch and I decided it because I decided that working with her was the intention was to stretch so then how could I do that if I didn't find the way to work with her and that's yeah. and that's what happened and I paid him back I you mm -hmm. know long ago paid him back in full mm -hmm. and the person, the friend that, that lent me the money that invested in me or whatever. And it was, and I can tell you, boy, did she stretch me, boy, <laughs> did she stretch me and that, and it's been, uh, it's been an incredible ride to you're right. Like my first one, I overpaid. So maybe that wasn't the best coach, but she at least taught me that I needed to invest in coaches. Like I really believed right. that, that she made that much of a difference. Like I had no website. Right. I had no idea of any of the kinds of things. And by the way, she got me an incredible VA 
uh, who has been with me the whole time. I got her out the deal. Awesome. And I didn't even See, know what that was. that was really was. a good investment. <laughs> That's right. I didn't even know what that was. And so, yeah. yes. And she has rode with me this whole time. And I can't do it without her. So I did get mm -hmm. something out of it. But I think you've got to listen. If you're sitting here waiting to hear something that's going to convince you to leap right or to stretch yourself and say i really uh, have to be able to afford this then i'm going to tell you that you just heard it <laughs> now now do it <laughs> now really and sincerely do it because truly i have you know you and i talk about this all the time kathy like we are the the elders in the mm -hmm. in the right and we're like we're running mm -hmm. out of time and you know we <laughs> gotta do i was this. crying i'm so old i don't have time and once like i'm the same age as you and i'm like Let's crap go. that makes me feel even worse because you look so much younger than me <laughs> <laughs> but you know listen it, we're doing it we're doing it we're That's taking right. a leap you know and That's right. so i mean you're starting your own production company at this age that's right i'm uh, and, and I guess what do everything it, yeah you've still got a lot of time i've still got a lot of time hey that's here's right. what i always look at now look at the presidents of the united states mm -hmm. how old are they they're a lot mm -hmm. older than we are mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're running the country yeah so we yeah. definitely can do all yeah. of this yeah and i think you just got to do it don't wait just if it's what's in your heart you you came to listen for a reason so uh so just go ahead do it and yeah. I, I don't believe you'll be sorry don't mean that you won't have some rough days some days where you will say oh god what did i do but mm -hmm. you will also get to the other side of that you just will and you just got to do it be so much more fulfilling and um the word that you brought to mind for me while you were describing that if you don't do it mm -hmm. is regret oh big time regret oh, oh and that's the one thing i don't want is regret me either. I have some already, so I don't want this to be. <laughs> another, I don't want to add one. to the list. But I'm making a high pile of wood that I can just throw fire <laughs> on. Come on now. I don't want to add. I, I really and truly want to. I believe that I'm here to do everything that I am supposed to do. Like I want to leave here, you know, Oprah says that all the time, used up, like use me up, use it. And I have to say that, you know, I talked about that I knew that I was going to be an entertainer in the beginning. I told you all the things I did. I have a, a lot of talents. So I just don't believe that I'm here to waste any of them, right? So I have to do it. So if you have one talent, why would you waste that? If you have two, why right. would you, right? Uh, and everybody no does and there's going to be people listening to this does. saying yeah but nobody i don't have a talent without something that they can't bring and and please 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 understand what that means it means that there may be uh half a million life coaches or half a million uh you know virtual experts or half a million whatever else but your talent is what you bring to that specific engagement, right? So nobody right. does virtual expert like you because of that That's talent right. that you have. Nobody does life coaching like you because of that talent that you have, which is also the reason why people are not your competition, right? And that, that's right. and that's why you can build a network with people who do the same thing as you or the people who do different things than you because you don't see them as competitors, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You see them as that's people right. who are on the same path as you are, maybe mm -hmm. even collaborators at some point. But exactly. there's definitely not a reason to think, oh, there's already so many of X, Y, and Z in the world. Why do they need me? No, they need you because your specific talent is missing. It's a gap in the market and somebody's waiting for that talent to help them achieve mm -hmm. their dreams. That's, That's really right. what it is. Yeah.
so many words of wisdom there, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have one more thing I want to talk okay. about um, <clears throat> that you made me think of because I, unfortunately I hear this way too many times from women. Mm -hmm. Never heard it from a guy. I will tell you, never heard okay. it from a guy, but I've, but I've heard it from a lot of women, which is I believe in myself. I'm willing to stretch. I'm willing to figure out where to get the money, but you know where I'm going, don't you? Yep. My husband says no, or if they're not married, my mom, my best friend, my sister, whoever it is that they go to for support says no, mm -hmm. makes me doubt in myself. Mm -hmm. Who, like my mom, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. That's what I always heard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So any tips yeah. for that? Cause that, that is devastating. That just like pierces your heart and makes you go, oh, who did I think I was mm -hmm. to think I could dare to leap? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to say, uh, in transparent in total transparency, I was thinking about this today. You know, my husband passed away in March and he was one of my biggest fans, like a biggest oh, fan. So I don't yay. speak from the place of, you know, my husband said no, or right. whatever. Right. I don't speak from that place. So I will say to you, that's a very difficult place to be in. If that is where you are, that is a very difficult place to be in. And then I will say to you, so are you stoppable for that? I mean, is that really what you're stoppable for? That what you know that you are supposed to do or what you know that you are dreaming of doing, that you just long to do, that you know that you would be so good at, that you know that you could help so many people at, are you stoppable? For someone else's comments and opinions. I, I think you've got to really look at yourself for that because if you're stoppable for that, then you know what? You're stoppable, period. You're not going to do this journey anyway. And that can't be you. That just can't be you. I don't believe that that's you. I believe that it is a very difficult journey when people don't believe in you but it is not an impossible one. And so you've got to decide if that's what you're stoppable for. And then you got to just push on. And, you know, I always, 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 you know, so this may not be the same thing, but very similar. When my kids were little, I chose, my husband and I, we chose to raise them very against the culture, uh, which is, uh, you know, much harder, harder culture, culture, uh, uh, kids get spankings, kids get, uh, belittled or just they're not their voices don't count and we chose to do something different and all along the way mm, uh, oh these kids are in charge oh what is oh what are you doing oh uh, and I would always say to myself the proof will be in the pudding I have a long way to go like they've got to grow up for me to prove right that we were right mm -hmm. to do it this way but i truly believed i'm like i don't care uh, the proof will be in the pudding and my my sons are amazing they're just these amazing human beings yes who they are always are. commented <laughs> on you know wow wow you know who raised you right that kind of thing <laughs> so sometimes you gotta just push on knowing that you're going to prove them wrong down the line and it may mm -hmm. be a long time down the line but you got to know i'm that's okay i'm i'm proving everybody wrong and i'm starting today mm -hmm. yeah, yeah exactly um there was a woman two years ago came to my program and and talked to me and i knew she would be amazing mm -hmm. and she was all in and then she went and talked to her husband and her husband not only said hell no her husband really said some things and put them in an email to me mm. that I went back to her and said, I'm really sorry, but I'm not going to be able to accept you into my program. Yeah. Yeah. And she stepped up and 24 hours later, she emailed me begging, may I please talk to you? Mm. I need to be in your program. I'm so sorry what my husband wrote. That will never happen again. I am doing this without his permission because I know this is what I am meant to do. Mm -hmm. And she did it. <laughs> and just this week, she shared with me that guess what? Her husband has joined her business. There you go. He's you all go. in now. There you go. 
There you go. That's right. Yeah. Sometimes, like I said, you know, ask yourself that question. Am I stoppable for this? If I am, then I'm just stoppable in general. This isn't really a dream. This isn't really what I want to do, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it, it's probably going to be the first of many obstacles that will try to get in your way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I love that story. Okay, Lynn, I've got the hardest question of all for you now. All right. <laughs> and it's uniquely difficult for you. Oh, because oh of everything you're <laughs> because of everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. So people that are listening to this and you know they're going to be going, oh my gosh, I have to work with Lynn. She's amazing. Because <laughs> that's exactly how I was when I met Lynn. How can, who do you want to contact you and how can they find out more about you? Yeah. So you always can find out more <laughs> about me at my website, lynnmaureenhurdle.com, right? Lynn with an E on the end. And uh, I think that's a great way to find out about me. But listen, if you're interested, you know, look, most people do not like conflict and most people do not know how to engage in it and make it work for them. The people that stand out are the people that can fearlessly step up when there's some kind of disagreement, right, at work or in a relationship, when there's a problem uh, in the way that people are relating to one another that is not allowing people to move past and to work together as a team, or when there's a problem that you are experiencing as a leader and you know you need to lead better. And part of that is because you're afraid to really engage in the conversations that help people see where the problems are and then solution those problems. So I absolutely coach people around that. I coach leaders who are interested in teams that want to be anti-racist and want to really learn how to be an anti-racist business. That is absolutely a part of what I do. And so you can reach me again at my website, lynnmaureenhurdle.com, or you can email, my email is there, it's lynn at lynnmaureenhurdle.com and reach out to me directly if that is something that you want to do. Uh, the On the matter race of race group that Kathy is in, we have a wait list and that is up on my website. Get on the wait list because you see what keeps happening. I keep saying this is it, this is it. <laughs> I wondered if you were going to offer that. And I didn't this, even want to ask. Is, has not been it. So get on the wait list for the next round of this isn't it, right? <laughs> right? But you do want to be on the wait list if you're yes. interested because you as do. you can tell, you she fills up within list. 24 hours. Yes, because the other thing is too that I actually went to the wait list because as I said, people interview for this, for that program. And I'm not taking people who really aren't right for it. So I did go to the wait list for this round of five groups. And so you want to get on the wait list for that. Uh, because it is a program that uh, has really caught fire and uh, and it's only going to catch more fire because we are at the beginning of this six month journey and I can tell you that with all of the people who are taking the journey, word is going to spread for sure. Yeah. Yep. Lynn, um, thank you so much for sharing that. We'll share all of those links in the show notes. One more thing about this is those companies that are like, do I really need to have, how is it really going to benefit my company mm -hmm. to have somebody talk about anti-racism and do all that? Could you address that a little bit? Because me as a business owner, I can tell you it has helped tremendously mm -hmm. and I just want more and more and more help in that arena, but I don't know how to articulate that. So yeah. Can you do so? Yeah. Well, first of all, one of the things that happens is, well, it's two things that happen. One is you may be someone who does not have diversity in your business or in your, uh, your client community. And why not? You should. And most of the time, you're the kind of person who really would like to, but you're just thinking, well, you know, it just hasn't happened. Well, you want, you can make it happen. 
you just have to know how to do that. And the way to start that journey is to educate yourself, to take the journey yourself around anti-racism and then to take it with your company. Like every uh, entrepreneur, every CEO that I work with wants their team to come along for the ride so that they can take the experience together. So one thing is that you want more diversity and you want when you get that diversity for there to be inclusiveness, that people feel and know that they are welcomed and that you are able to serve that community in ways that actually serve them, not in ways that serve the community that you, you had originally, right? You have to serve everybody. So that's one thing. If you already have a diverse community, one of the things that I hear uh, people who I've worked with say is, I had no idea that I actually was making them fit into my version of everybody is all the same. And so everybody gets the Guilty. same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like, wow, I, how do I serve them? I really want to serve them because I want them here. They're, I love them here, right? I want them to feel like I love when I come to Kathy's. Uh, community, right? I love, I mean, I, you know, we feel that way with Jen Kim, like love being there oh, and that diverse. I love how diverse it is. I love it. It's so much more fun. I learn so much. Yes. You feel welcome there. You don't have yes. to look around the room and go, oh my gosh, you know, is, is this really right for me? Or, you know, right. there's no people of color here or there's people of color here, but you know, is that just for show or you, you know that you've yeah. not only got the diversity, but you've got the inclusiveness because you're doing the work you've learned. And one of the things that I think that really, that I know that, that uh, makes me stand out from the rest around diversity, equity, and inclusion is my background in conflict resolution because absolutely i can help you have those difficult conversations with some real skills around conflict resolution and that doesn't always accompany diversity equity and inclusion training it's uh, and i feel like that is a piece that's missing and it's a piece that you get with me because i'm never ever going to do one without the other right Never, because even when I just do straight conflict resolution, I always throw in diverse, right? Because <laughs> I, like I got to know about culture and your culture, and I got to help you understand how that is affecting the way that you engage or don't engage in conflict. Yep. And um, Lynn, as I shared with you before, I think it was before we went on air, was that I really feel like if I hadn't already worked with you on conflict, if I hadn't already worked with you on leadership, I wouldn't have been nearly as prepared to, to step up as a leader during this challenging time, yeah. during this Black Lives Matter, during everything going on. But as a result of all three of those things combined with you, but you're just talking about that everybody does need all three of those. I'm so much better prepared. Oh, yes, changes, I still have a long way to go. Awesome. Yeah, but the changes, you know, like I, I saw that when we were doing the conflict resolution work alone. And now that the anti racism work has been added to it, it's, it, you are at levels that, um, yeah. that are completely new and really quite not just wonderful, but also the service that you are doing to the world because of it is, I think, life-changing. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. And see, that's how you are changing it with your, um, on the matter of race, mm -hmm. you're not just changing those of us who are in your program. Yeah. You're changing everybody we touch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's so Lynn, goal. you're, you're really changing the world. <laughs> I mean, in a, on a big scale and I, Thank and you. I so value that. Thank you. Well, I could talk with you all day long. <laughs> and of course we have talked deep long into the night yes. with tequila shots. Yeah. <laughs> and we will again in the future. And we will I know. again in the so future. I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I very much look forward to that. Me Thank too. you so much for spending this time with me and sharing all of your brilliance with our listeners. Thank you for the invite. I really am honored. And, uh, and thank you listeners for tuning in. Bye Lynn. Bye. Bye everybody. 
Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.